What's going on guys? So we are out here at this 2021 Vanley Beacon fifth wheel. This is a beautiful fifth wheel. Vanley is a division of Tiffin and this is the 42 RDB. Full body paint, this thing's about 43 feet long, 18,500 pound GVWR, twin 8,000 pound axles. It has the elevated rear deck. If you haven't seen the videos that I've made on this already showing the full exterior and the full interior video, as well as how large these storage compartments are, definitely recommend going and taking a look at them. Anyways, today is a very, very quick and easy installation day. This is something anybody can do. We are gonna install some accessories that I think most RVers would be able to appreciate, especially because it helps you utilize space more effectively. But more importantly, these are such do-it-yourself accessories that, again, they just, they're functional and they work really well. But before that, you know, when we're done, we're gonna hitch up to the Cargo Mate trailer that we have here. This is the one and only BTBRV Cargo Mate trailer. And I also recommend looking back at some of the videos we did on this beautiful trailer. We did a lot of upgrades to it, including wheels and tires. We went with a much nicer aluminum wheel versus the steel wheels that were on it. We put Goodyear Endurance tires. We upgraded the equalizer from the standard just steel equalizer to a Dexter Easy Flex. We put thicker shackle straps and greasable wet bolts on. Of course, we branded the side. The inside of this has been completely bedlined as well put a lot of lighting inside of it wired it up with some batteries put this awesome front tongue jack on this is the ultra fab phoenix 4000 tongue jack you need to go back and watch that video if you want to see just how fast this thing is absolutely amazing but before we do that we're going to put two accessories on this beacon okay so we're going to start this video off a little out of order because i'm actually out here two days after i filmed the video that you're going to watch after i do this very first upgrade so originally there were going to be two upgrades it was going to be the two that are featured after this one but this one finally came in. I'd been waiting for it for a while, and I wanted to go ahead and add this because I really think this is probably the most important upgrade that you can do on most RVs when you first get them. Now, not all of them. I say most because there are a few RV manufacturers who have been thoughtful enough to kind of include this in their build, but not all of them. So this is probably the most important upgrade you wanna to do to your RV specifically travel trailers and fifth wheels. Motorhomes are usually set up a little bit differently and this may not fit in that application. But if you own a travel trailer or motorhome, you most likely are gonna wanna do this. This is a valve, it's a twist on waste valve from Valterra. Now you might be thinking, why do I need this when I have the valves that I you know, can drain my sewer connections with anyways? This goes on the very, very end of your connection. Why? Because when you are pulling your travel trailer or fifth wheel down the road, anything that was caught in the pipes, anything that didn't fully make it to the very end is gonna be waiting for you at the very end. So the next time you take your RV out or the next time you remove the little cap off of the end of your sewer connection, you're possibly gonna be greeted with all the remnants of what was left in the pipes before you actually got back or while you were traveling. So. This is to prevent that. Let's go ahead and get this put on first, and I think you're, uh, you're gonna understand why. Okay, so the tools you'll need to install this pretty much consist of a five gallon bucket and your hand. That's pretty much it. The hand to tear this open and to put this in place and the five gallon bucket to kind of get started with this mess. So what we're gonna wanna do is place the five gallon bucket at an angle like this and go ahead and take the cap off I'm wearing gloves because this can get pretty nasty and I really don't want to show you all of this, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the cap. This is going to be potentially nasty. So I'll hold the camera right here so you can hear it, but not see it. There might not be anything in there, but I have a feeling there is. And I can already kind of hear that there probably is. I can actually hear the pressure being released as well. So there shouldn't be much in here, but there is a little bit in there. Okay, so I have now drained the remnants. Thankfully, it all appears to be pretty clean water. A little stinky, but it is clean. Now what we're gonna do is peel this out of its packaging and go ahead and put it in place over where the valve cap would normally go. 
And if you're interested in knowing, this is part number T58 right there. This is the Valterra twist on waste valve. And the way I position this, if you notice how this locks in place, the way I position it is with the handle this way. Main reason why is I don't want any chance if I put it this way that the leverage of the handle in this top assembly is gonna cause it to potentially come off while I'm driving down the road. So I'm simply gonna grip it right here. I'll kind of tilt this part up a little bit. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I should be using a tripod. And then I'm going to just simply twist it in place. Just like that. And there we go. So this is complete. That's all it takes. It's literally a 12-second install. And now what I have is a valve at the end. So whenever we get to our campground, whenever we get back, whenever I decide to dump everything, all I have to do is hook my sewer connection up, open this, and I don't have to worry about what's lying in wait for me on the other side of this cap. There we go. All locked in place. Got plenty of slack right here for that. This is completely ready to go and lock. When I get to the campground, I simply unscrew this, connect my sewer hose to it, and then whenever we are connected to the sewer connection at the campground, open this up and anything that was stuck in those pipes is going to flow out. If you have an RV and you don't have one of these and you have dealt with this before where you open it up and stuff comes pouring out, I'd love to know how you deal with that. So leave a comment below because I know that not everybody has this or has purchased this accessory, even though it's probably the number one and first accessory you should buy. Guys, I'm going to put a link to this in the description to my sponsor, eTrailer.com, who sells this. This one was actually sent to me by Valterra and eTrailer is one of their official distributors for this. So I'll provide you a link there if this is something you're interested in. Anyways, guys, let's move on to the rest of the reviews. So here they are, the two accessories that are going on. This is a chair and bike rack. This goes over your ladder. Very, very easy to use. And if you have lawn chairs or small folding chairs, things like that, or a small bike, it gives you the ability to hang this over your back ladder and get it out of your storage. In the case of something like this, you really don't need it because you have so much storage, including this back tray that pulls out. But because we plan on putting mountain bikes back here and we have other things in these side trays, you know what, let's utilize the ladder that's on the back already. And then this is a very, very important upgrade for RVs that might be in storage or at your home and you wanna keep bugs and critters out of your furnace. So before we put this on, let's go ahead and put these on because this is a very, very quick and simple installation. So here is the outside of the Suburban Furnace. These are notorious for getting dirt daubers, yellow jackets, things like that inside of here. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna take these little mesh pieces of stainless steel and mount them like that over these holes just so you don't have to deal with that. Now they make all sorts of kits that give you the flexibility of really addressing any type of furnace, any type of exterior opening you may have on your RV whether it be a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome. But these are really simple to install. All you have are these little spring clips right here. You mount the spring on the inside, you use this little tool to extend the spring, and it hooks around this piece right here. So the first thing we've done is we take the little spring, we hook it in there like that. Next, we put the tool right down the center of it, and we kind of hook it around the inside piece right there. And you simply press it up against the side here, Loop it around like so, pop it out. There you go. One down, one to go. Okay, we have our second one in place. Got the spring looped through, got the little tool ready to extend it out. We're gonna push that under, loop it around, pop that out. Number two, in place. There you go, that's all it is. And it just, again, keeps bugs, flying insects from getting inside of your furnace. So very, very, very simple install. Took all of about a minute and a half. So we got one down, one to go. Okay, so next we're gonna put this up. This is again, this chair and bike rack on the back. I like to zip tie it in place. You don't have to do this and it doesn't come with these really long zip ties. You can pick these up at Walmart, at Target, at Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you want, or just get them on Amazon. This is from Camco. And both of these products were provided to me by eTrailer. So I want to give them a big shout out. They are the official sponsor of my channel. And oftentimes, you know, there's all sorts of little things you may not be aware of that are available for RVers. So we get together, collaborate on what you guys might be interested in, what you guys might not even know exist. And this gives us an opportunity to show you some of these really cool products. 
So to put this on, you're simply going to loop it over your ladder like this. Now you might be wondering if it's gonna hit the paint. Even slid all the way back, there's still a good half inch of space there. But that's why I put the zip ties on. I just wanna be cautious and I wanna make sure that there's no chance that I'm gonna damage the beautiful finish on this. And I don't want you to damage the beautiful finish on your RV either. Most RVs have a different ladder than this though. Most RVs have a ladder that extends off the back whereas this one folds up and out of the way. But it's pinned into place, so it's not gonna accidentally deploy out when you're driving down the road. If you have an RV that has the ladder already extending out, there's absolutely no chance that you know that's gonna hit unless something really, really crazy happens, and I can't really foresee what that might be. Anyways, I'm gonna put the two zip ties on, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like and why I'm using zip ties. Okay, so there we go. We have one zip tie here fastened around to pull it forward, and another zip tie right here that is keeping it perfectly stable where it needs to be. So the next thing we really need to do is throw some chairs up here to see how stable it is. And I happen to have two chairs right here that I can quickly loop over. Now, the goal here, of course, would be to mount this higher, to mount it, say, right up here. But you kind of get the point here. You can put chairs around here. You can bungee cord them into place. You can even mount them a little higher and have it bungee cord to the top of the rack here as opposed to beneath it. But if you have bungee cords and you have this, you can easily position chairs like this on the back of your RV which can make transporting them a little bit easier, especially if you have an RV that doesn't have a tremendous amount of storage. And if that's the case, something like this can be a real, real good space saver for you just to help you carry some of those things that are important to you out to the campsite and back. But this is really nice. It's very sturdy. I wouldn't overload it. I'd probably say, you know, the maximum amount of weight I would put on this would probably be, you know, maybe 30 pounds. I wouldn't put anything really awkward or something that has to really balance out weight really well. But for chairs like this, for small folding chairs, I think this is absolutely a great solution. And again, mount it higher, right? Try to put it, you know, up here or up there and then use bungee cords to secure it to the actual ladder. Better yet, use a ratchet strap something that you can actually tighten and you know isn't going to have any possibility of coming loose. But very cool product. This is very, very affordable as well. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video, as well as the bug guards that go over the furnace holes, because I know those are things a lot of people just don't think about. You get a new RV, you wonder what you can get that's affordable, that can help you out. These are just a few of those items. They're both made by Camco, and they're both available from eTrailer.com. Again, they provided those to me for review and evaluation, so I definitely want to give them a big shout out. All right, so as you guys know, I currently don't have a tailgate with a camera on the back of it, which which means when I'm backing up to a trailer, I don't have any way of visually seeing my hitch from inside of the cab if I'm out here doing it by myself. I wanna give you kind of a clue to how I like to do this. It makes it really simple for me. And if you have a dually, it makes it even easier simply because you have a better reference in terms of the width of your trailer to your truck. So right now I am hitching up to my cargo mate cargo trailer. I know my truck is eight feet wide and I know the trailer is a hair over eight feet wide. So as long as I line the back dually fenders up with the edge of the cargo trailer on both sides, then I'm in good shape. And when I get out and I take a look at the truck, I'm also in good shape. Now I back up up until I feel comfortable to where I know I'm not actually hitched underneath the ball. And then what I do is I go back there and I see how far away from the ball I am. And I simply have my door open. I put my foot right here, and then I reference how far that distance might be to something I see on the ground like a rock. So if I'm a foot away from being underneath the coupler, then I'll simply put my foot right here, and I'll see roughly a foot's distance to that point, and then I'll back up that distance, and then I go out and I check again. I just finished doing that. This is where I'm at. So I know I just need to back up just a little tiny bit more. This just makes it a little bit easier for me. There we go. Backed up about a half an inch and I should be pretty much right under it. There we go. Now, if you have a problem coupling up because the ball might not be seated in a position where you can lower your lock here, what you need to do is get in the vehicle, do a short little tug, and it will seat it on there properly. So, just like that. In a good position. There we go. 
I can feel that the ball is underneath there and locked in place. And I can go ahead and retract my jack leg. Right now the trailer is empty, won't be that way for long. Got a little over 500 pounds resting on the ball here. That's partially because I have a workbench up front, as well as a couple batteries and a little storage thing beneath it that are adding some weight. Okay, so I got the trailer hitched up, got the breakaway cable connected. A lot of people, for some reason, think that that is a step that I forget, and I don't. But everything's connected. It's been a while since you've uh, seen the cargo trailer behind the truck, hasn't it? It's pretty good. It's holding up well. It's very difficult to clean because it gets really dusty, and if you use a brush, you end up really scratching that finish. So you pretty much just have to hose it down when it gets too dirty. But looks really good. Anyways, guys, we're gonna hit the road.